Hi there everyone and welcome back to National 5 Biology. Today we're going to be looking at some past paper questions, more specifically section 1 or the multiple choice section of the 2018 National 5 Biology past paper. What I'd like you to do is when the questions come up, I'd like you to pause, answer the questions yourself, then resume the video and I'll be talking through the question and give you the answer at the end. So let's get started with section 1. In question one, the diagram shows a cell with a section of the cell membrane magnified. So hopefully you should remember that the cell membrane is made up of proteins and phospholipids, so it can only be answer A or B, but molecule X is pointing at the large blob-like structures in the cell membrane, which are proteins. So molecule X, and the answer is B, protein. In question two, the diagram shows an experiment in which a model cell was placed in sucrose solution. Straight away, you should be thinking about transport across the membrane, but when you read further into the question, it says at the start of the experiment, the model cell weighed 25 grams, and at the end, it weighed 30 grams. What is the percentage increase in mass? So it's a percentage increase question, a problem solving question. Uh, hopefully you know how to do this. If you don't, remember to check out the video that I made on this. But if you're a bit unsure, for a percentage increase or percentage decrease, we need to first of all find out the difference in mass. So we know that the cell weighed 25 grams at the start, and at the end it weighed 30 grams. So the difference is 5 grams. We then need to divide this difference, 5 grams, by the original mass, which in this case is 25 grams. So if we divide 5 by 25, we get an answer of 0.2. What we then do is times that answer by 100 in order to get our percentage and we get an answer of 20 or plus 20% an increase in mass. So here it would be answer C, 20. For question 3, glucose molecules in a low concentration in the kidney have to be moved into the bloodstream where there is a higher concentration of glucose. The process responsible for this action is, and it gives you some examples of transport across the membrane. If we look back through this at uh, this question here, it says glucose molecules in a low concentration have to move into the bloodstream where there's a high concentration. So a movement from low to high is against or upper concentration gradient, which is active transport, which is D. For question four, it says which of the following represents the sequence of events in the production of a protein from the genetic code? So we're looking at protein synthesis. So you should remember that DNA then comes into mRNA, mRNA goes to the ribosome where we have amino acids and finally the production, the synthesis of proteins. So DNA, mRNA, amino acids and protein is question or answer B. For question five, which of the following are all types of proteins? So you should hopefully remember share, so structural, hormonal, antibodies, receptors, and enzyme. The one here that is correct is C, hormones, receptors, and antibodies, because the rest of them have an incorrect group of proteins in them. Question six is looking at the stages of genetic engineering. They start off with identifying the required gene from a source chromosome. The next step is that, that they extract the required gene, and at the same time, the plasmid is extracted from a bacterial cell. Then there is a stage X, and after stage X, the plasmid is inserted into the host bacterial cell to produce a genetically modified organism. If you look at the stage prior to stage X, then because the gene has been extracted and the plasmid has been extracted, the next step really has to be that the required gene is inserted into the bacterial plasmid. So in this case, question six would be D, insert required gene into the bacterial plasmid so then that plasmid can be inserted into the host bacterial cell to produce a GM organism. Question 7 is an example of experimental design. We're showing you a diagram of the experiment to find the energy content of different foods. However, the question is asking you how to improve the reliability of this experiment. If you look at the answers A, B, C and D, you should hopefully be highlighted by B, which says that repeating the experiment with each food several times, because we know in order to increase reliability, you want to repeat the experiment several times and see what you get for the answer. So seven is B. For question eight, 
the apparatus shown was used to investigate the rate of respiration in yeast. So it's trying to confuse you with all the experimental design, but really this is quite a simple question on your knowledge of respiration. It asks you which of the following changes would cause a decrease in the rate of respiration of the yeast. So there's all these different things that you could change, but in order to decrease the rate of respiration, the only one of the answers that makes sense is to decrease the concentration of the glucose. Less glucose means that less respiration is taking place. So 8 is C. For question 9, this is a question on the structure of the reflex arc, where we have the nerve ending and P, we have R in the cross section of the spinal cord, and we have Q, which leads to the muscles. Let's ask you which row in the table identifies P, Q and R. The correct answer for this is B, and the reason why some people get this wrong is because you're used to answering the reflex arc in the order of sensory intermotor. Whereas if you read the, the question or read the answers available, it's asking for them for you in the order of motor, sensory and inter. So the motor neuron is Q because it's connected to the muscle. The sensory neuron is P because it's connected to the nerve ending. And the interneuron is R because it's in the spinal cord. So the correct answer is B. For question 10, the diagram represents a section through the brain. G and H are highlighted on the structure of the brain. Which of the following links a letter, G or H, to its correct structure and function? So the first one you read, A, is correct, where it says G is the cerebrum, which is true, and it is the site of reasoning and memory, which is also true. If you have one of these questions and you think the first question or first answer is correct, make sure to go through B, C and D as well, just to make sure you've not made a mistake. But if you read through them, you realise the rest of them are incorrect, and A is the correct answer. Question 11 and 12 both refer to the following flow diagram, where you have organ X, which releases hormone Y, which acts on hormone on organ Z, which promotes conversion of glycogen to glucose. Now that's the important bit, because it tells you about the pathway before it. In question 11, you're asked which row in the table identifies organ X and hormone Y. So organ X really has to be the pancreas because that's what picks up any change in blood glucose concentration. So we're left with answers C and D because the pancreas must be correct. The other answers give you your hormone Y must be insulin or, gluc or glucagon. Sorry. If we look at this though, the end result of this pathway is the conversion of glycogen to glucose. In order for glycogen to be converted to glucose, you need to release glucagon, which will give us answer D, because insulin changes glucose to glycogen, which is the opposite of what we're wanting here. So in 11D, the organ X is the pancreas, and hormone Y is glucagon, because glycogen is converted to back to glucose. For question 12, specialised cells allow organ Z to respond to hormone Y. This is because the surface of the cells in organ Z have complementary somethings. We spoke about this before. I try and think of hormones working a little bit like enzymes. The hormones only work with their target organ because they have complementary receptors. So 12 is D. Question 13 is referring to rate of transpiration and how wind speed, humidity, surface area and temperature affect it. An increase in which of the following factors would decrease the rate of transpiration in plants? So the correct answer for 13 is B, because an increase in humidity decreases the rate of transpiration. Wind speed, surface area and temperature, if they are increased, they also increase the rate. So B is the correct answer. For 14, it is asking you which of the following statements about blood cells is false. So which of these is incorrect? White blood cells are part of the immune system, that is true. Phagocytes are a type of white blood cell, that is also true. Red blood cells contain haemoglobin, that's true. And phagocytes transport nutrients around the body, that is incorrect. Phagocytes do not do that, so the correct answer for 14 is D. In question 15, which row in the table identifies how lymphocytes destroy pathogens? Do they produce antibodies, yes or no? And does phagocytosis take place, yes or no? The 
easy part to break this down is lymphocytes are not phagocytes, so phagocytosis does not appear here, so it has to be no. So it's cut down to answers A or B. However, lymphocytes do produce antibodies in order to destroy pathogens, so it has to be A. Antibodies are produced, but phagocytosis does not take place. 15 is A. Question 16 is about the blood as well, but it is giving you an identification key instead. It is asking you, the following key can be used to identify the different components of blood. Use the key above to identify which of the diagrams, A, B, C or D, represents a platelet. So if you look at platelet in the actual key and compare it to the diagram and work your way back, you should find that D must be a platelet. Its diameter is less than 0 0.005 millimetres and also the nucleus is absent. So that's a good way of going it through it in reverse to find that D is the platelet. In question 17, which of the following statements is true of villi? Blood capillaries absorb glycerol and amino acids. That is untrue. Blood capillaries absorb glucose and fatty acids. That is not true. The lacteal absorbs glycerol and fatty acids. That is correct. So C is looking very good. And D, lacteals absorb glucose and amino acids. That's not true. C is the correct answer. For question 18, an ecosystem consists of abiotic factors plus a what? And it gives you examples of community, biodiversity, population and habitat. Hopefully you can go back to Unit 3 and remember that community and its habitat plus abiotic factors is an ecosystem. So 18 is D. Question 19 refers to this fairly simple food web. And it says a chemical was used to control the number of slugs. Which of the following could be a result of a large decrease in slug numbers? So you're looking at slugs and you're trying to figure out what would happen if that slug population decreased and what the effect would be. The correct answer here is A, an increase in snails. Because if we look at the decrease in slug population, then that would mean that there'd be more oak tree for snails and caterpillars to grow or their population to increase. Caterpillars are not an option here, only snails are, so A is correct. The snails would increase. Question 20 is a really good example of an experimental design question. It shows you the diagrams show an investigation into seed germination. There are six tubes with some different conditions going on. For a valid conclusion to be drawn, which two tubes should be compared to show the effect of temperature on germination? So it's really important that the only thing that is being changed, the only variable being changed in this um, set of six test tubes should be temperature. So if we compare them, then two and five, so answer C would be the correct one because between tube two and tube five, there are 10 seeds in both. They are both have wet cotton wool. The only thing that has changed is the temperature. So for example, tube two is at 20 degrees and tube five is at five degrees. If you compare the other tubes, some of them have different numbers of seeds, or some of them are wet cotton wool and dry cotton wool. We are only looking for the one which changes in temperature, which is answer C. Question 21 is referring to pyramids of energy, and it shows you at the top of the pyramid is level X. It's asking you, there is less energy at level X in the pyramid because why? Now, there are some examples here, like there are fewer organisms or the organisms at level X are very small that are just wrong, whereas the correct answer is C. Energy is lost at each level in the food chain. So a pyramid of energy, energy is lost at each level, which means there is less energy at the top. So 21 is C. For question 22, mutations result in changes to genetic material. Which of the following is not true of mutations? So again, we're looking for the incorrect answer. Radiation can increase their rate, that is true. Genetic material is affected at random, that is true. New alleles may be produced, absolutely true. But for B, they always have a harmful effect, that is incorrect. It could be harmful, it could be beneficial. So B is incorrect, so 22 is B. 23 is relating to natural selection. It says it occurs when there are selection pressures. Which of the following could be a result of selection pressures? If we look at A, Organisms with favourable alleles survive and reproduce. That is true. That could be a result of selection pressure. So 23 is A. 
Question 24 is looking at the build-up of pesticides and the problems of pesticide use. And it says stage J is pesticides are absorbed by plants, stage K are pesticides are built up in animals, and stage L, plants are eaten by animals. Identify the order of steps by which pesticides could reach lethal levels in the bodies of animals. So looking at the stages of bioaccumulation. The correct answer for 24 is D, because it starts off with J, that pesticides are absorbed by the plants after it's been sprayed on them. In step two, those plants are eaten by animals. And stage K, pesticides are built up in animals, because if those animals keep eating plants, which have absorbed pesticides, then the pesticides are going to build up in animals and could reach lethal doses. And finally, for 25, which row in the table identifies biotic and abiotic factors which can affect a population. So there's all these examples of biotic and abiotic factors. Most of them are wrong. If you look at 25A, then grazing and predation are examples of biotic factors. pH and temperature are examples of abiotic factors. So 25 is A. So give yourself a mark on how you've done, and well done for going through these. The best thing to do is just keep practicing past paper questions at this stage uh, to give you some exam experience. Thanks very much to loot for you who commented on my quizzes video uh, asking if I could do this. Uh, really appreciate the, the input. It was a really good idea and I'll get on with more of these if people are finding them helpful. Thanks very much folks and keep practicing your past papers.